and welcome to the very first ever episode eight of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Nikki James, sitting here alongside two of the best homies, Chris. What's up, guys? And Zachary. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? What have you guys been playing lately? I've been playing a lot of uh, uh, No Man's Sky. Yes. Love, love the new update. Everything looks way more beautiful. Um, and for those listeners uh, listening that also watch our YouTube channel, we're doing Let's Plays on the on the new uh, permadeath mode which is insanely difficult and very permanent death and it's the most permanent of deaths turns out every planet has radiation <laughs> yeah right it, apparently every, every, even the pretty blue sky ones yeah that's yeah. What, that's what the, our experience was all that you're always at least like 10 minutes away from your ship and it's impossible to get back to it if you're traveling the surface of the planet <laughs> i i saw part of that let's play and you guys were like all right so uh we're out in the radiation um our uh you know we're moving pretty slow no jetpack and um it's gonna take us about 10 minutes to get back to the ship <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like literally that's how long it was probably gonna take you to at the end of one of the, the at the end of one of the upcoming episodes we're ending the episode thinking we're safe and we're just like all right guys we'll see you on another crossplay and we're dead <laughs> <laughs> this is how the episode ends it's pretty yeah, funny nice uh, i've been playing uh, a lot of a little gem called euro truck simulator 2 you know anything about that game chris no enlighten me um well you are a truck driver in europe uh drive big rig trucks and you got to deliver like on the opposite side of the american road yeah exactly so all messed up no only in only in great britain not in europe Ah, uh, fact of the day. Zach is the clever clogs. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you're, you're a truck driver in Europe, and you're delivering like bales of hay or almonds or floorboards from like Nice, France to Luxembourg, and you just you just drive a truck, dude. Like, nice. That's it. You can, I can get into that. You, I mean, you can listen to actual uh, like Polish radio, like live. Yeah, um, Polish. stuff like that. What were we? We were listening to Albanian radio. And we were we? listening to like an Albanian rock station, but it sounded more like uh, like adult contemporary funk or something. Like it was really <laughs> cool music that yeah. we would never hear anywhere else. So it was really cool. It was a really well, fun I, but, game. I haven't been playing anything. I haven't been playing nothing at all. Oh really? What are you just raising your just, family? Just I've been playing the diaper changing game. Ugh, what's your high score? Um, about four to five in a day. Of, that's shitty diapers. Ugh. Oh my god! What are you feeding your kids? I'm feeding Jesus. him what we Feed grew up on: refried beans. That's why hot pockets, weenies. <laughs> that's the weenies. A lot of weenies in your Parmesan house. weenies. When we were um, kids, Dad would add weenies to everything. Yeah, and we thought it was like a, a good thing. I mean, it, it was. A, it, it was, a, was a, thing, a great thing. But we thought it was like we were eating. Kings eating beanie weenies. <laughs> it is. Yeah, beanie still... weenies and then the eggs and weenies. And he would also sometimes put weenies on pizza. Been a thing. I Ooh. did not. I haven't I don't remember. That must have been. It wasn't. A, it wasn't like a frequent thing. It was when I was like an older teenager. He did that a few times. Yeah. <laughs> How thin would he slice them? Because not if very thin. Like, <laughs> not like like a half inch. No, they were like thickies. Like <laughs> some thick boys, huh? Yeah. I think uh, he would just get really high and probably just want hot dog pizza. <laughs> yeah, I could. I, you know, I'd probably want to tear down a hot dog pizza if I was really drunk or stoned or something. I would be interested in maybe trying it once, but uh, but yeah, I haven't been playing much. Um, but I'm g I'm about to pick up that that indie title, What Remains of Edith Finch. It's re really intriguing. It looks really good. So I'm gonna go pick that up later and what, you guys know how what's that, that game about. You're um you're exploring exploring you're exploring <laughs> the uh, Finch Manor, and it's this huge mansion basically in this very apparently emotional story is and is unfolding in front of you and it's just a very well written um um story from what i hear so i'm really psyched to play it and the you know the environments look amazing it's very atmospheric um Bad. is it for ps4 also i believe so yes Six. so i'll be picking that up i'll let you know as soon as it's available you can just hop on my account and try that out too a bit of housekeeping before we get started guys if you want to follow us on twitter you can over at crossplay pod you can also read the blog at crossplayentertainment.wordpress.com and i want to take a second to thank those of you that support us on patreon if you feel like you want to do that also you can do so over at patreon.com slash crossplay entertainment uh so we're gonna get right on down the list let's get started with the topic of the show which first we're gonna get to the news, my friend. You're right. I almost <laughs> tried to <skip> the news. <laughs> Wow. 
So, fight doctors everywhere are coming out and saying that Conor McGregor is in serious fucking trouble. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Physical trouble. What do you mean? Not only from, you know, he's not only in trouble for, in, in a matter of losing the fight, but as well as getting seriously physically injured is what they're saying. Go on. Just because for the fact that he is considered an amateur going up against one of the best in the world, boxing. Um, of course, um, opponents to this are coming out and saying, look, this guy is from a very vicious sport, MMA, where you're getting kicked in the head and slammed to the ground. I have a question for our resident MMA expert, Zach. Does being an MMA fighter constitute being a professional boxer? Um, in terms because of, you are boxing professionally. I, I don't. Well, in terms of the risk that it that it poses to you, yeah, you 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 have just as much of a risk in a in a um, MMA fight as it's you do in a boxing. More. I would say Way maybe more. more. You're not yeah, taking you get knees to the head in a boxing elbows. match. But he is still very much considered an amateur as far as the sport of boxing goes. Right, and in that reason, why I, I don't think a doctor would want to put their reputation on the line and say this person who's an inexperienced boxer on paper. And this isn't is one going, fight doctor. This is several. Um, I don't have the name, but apparently several well-known fight doctors so coming out. So let's get back that. to the story. So what are they saying? Yeah, he's, so he's, at, he's at a large risk of getting himself physically hurt. harmed. Yeah, and you know, but they're saying that because he's he on paper he is an amateur and a boxer, and he's and he's fighting an undefeated world champion in five different weight classes. I mean, he's he's. On paper, it looks like a horrible matchup, and I guess it is in boxing terms. But I mean, as an MMA fighter, he's been exposed to these risks, so it's not if it's not a fair assessment. It's, well, uh, yeah, and this isn't um, this isn't new to him. We'll yeah, ju- we'll jump more into that once we get into the UFC uh, section here. Let's get on with the news. Uh, Microsoft is saying they're they are in talks with Sony for crossplay. That is another topic we're going to get into um, more seriously. Um, just another item in the news you need to know about. Um, happy birthday, Kirby! Woo! Kirby, huh? Kirby's 25. 25? Wow. Yeah, he can rent a car. Cute, Kirby. And um, old Pierce Brosnan's 20, 20. I bet you didn't know that. He looks like 60 or 70. <laughs> he's, a, he's the old 20 no, year old. <laughs> his um, GoldenEye avatar, I'm talking about. The game GoldenEye in Nintendo 64 is 20 years old. Damn. How old do you feel, Nick? I feel incredibly old. 20. I feel incredibly old. I remember pl- I have very vivid memories of playing that game and throwing around Odd Jobs hat like a tool bag. But he's not the <laughs> oldest person on this list. We have Vince McMahon at 74 years old. No chance. Happy birthday. Um, last bit of news. Microsoft <clears throat> Microsoft admits they may have announced Crackdown 3 a little too early. No shit. Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> so, we discussed this last week. <laughs> yeah, um, it's... Yeah, that was my that was my response directly. Uh, um, and I'm quoting here. I think in the past we may have made the mistake of announcing some exclusives a little bit too early. We're trying wow, to learn from that mistake hard. and do better. So we have a bit that's in development now that we're not talking about. Microsoft Studios publishing GM Shannon Loftus points to the crackdown three delay and a bad habit they're trying to break. I love the language they use to try to make themselves not sound like idiots. We may or may not have <laughs> announced some titles, exclusives, maybe just a little early. A tad. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. we fucked up and announced Crackdown 3 about three years too early. <laughs> like, or two years maybe too early. Well, those are the things uh, you need to know for the news for this week. So now, rolling on to the topic of the show, why won't sony allow crossplay what is their beef uh zach well sony as we know has they have a pretty storied history with server hacks and things like that well, real quick i just want to for those that don't know i want to define crossplay what, what crossplay is in the gaming world is the ability to play a game like rocket league or rainbow six or whatever any game against somebody on a different system so that means somebody on ps4 can play uh, rocket league against somebody on the nintendo switch go ahead sorry pretty cool concept so it is a very cool concept. A cool name for a company. Uh, a great name for a podcasting company. <laughs> yeah. We need to hyphenate our name, though. <laughs> so Sony has, they've had server hacks before, and that really threatened the community. Hell yeah. And I think right now the people who use Sony PlayStations, people who play on a Sony PlayStation on a daily basis, are happy with the online experience. So, I mean, Sony, do, they don't, you know... They have they have a lot to lose by allowing crossplay. They have more to lose than they have to gain. That's very very true. That's one of my kind of pillars of my. So you guys don't think that um, PlayStation gamers so much really want crossplay? 
I don't think it matters to them. Uh, we have, we are, there's no shortage of uh, p- people to play with on PlayStation. You know what I mean? Not that there is on Xbox either. I mean, but they, well, they that, that, that's not really the point. I think the whole point is because I've seen a lot of people that have that same argument, but they also have um, a lot of people on their friends list or not on their friends list that play on a different console. You know, there's a lot of people that made the jump from um, Xbox to PlayStation. So they actually left a few people behind and some people like the idea of being able to play with some of their old friends from Xbox or, you know, vice versa. Or maybe be able, you know, being able to choose the game based on or not having to choose the game based, based on a friends list. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely one argument uh, for crossplay. Uh Another thing to to consider is gamers nowadays, um, this generation of consoles, a lot of people have both consoles. Yeah, it's it's not really, I mean, a lot of people also don't, but it's not 1999 anymore where you either have a PlayStation or a Nintendo. Um, it's, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, so a lot of people have both consoles. I, I understand a lot of people don't, but... No, I don't. I have one. You, you had know, a PS4. I, 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 did, <laughs> I did have a PS4, but because of financial reasons, you know, I wanted to get the Xbox back, um, but I couldn't afford to pay full price for it, so I had to let the, the But did you ever go. have both at the same time? No. Well, Do you think... Only, and that was just pure money. If I had more money, I would have all of them. So you're right in that aspect, but I don't. I mean, Zach, do you have more than one console? Uh, no, I just have a PlayStation. Two, two out of three of us at this table. Yeah, so even then, 33% out of 100 is a lot of people. When you're considering uh, PlayStation sold over 60 million units. I, I personally, as a, from a gamer perspective, I think, it, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I'd love to be able to hop on and play you know, friends or family that are on a different console. Well, I don't think Sony thinks it's not a great idea. I don't think Sony thinks it's not going to be fun or good for gamers and things I, like I, that. I actually think they're going to do it. I, oh no, there's there's no doubt in my mind. Crossplay will happen. It's just a matter of when. But I think I think the issue here is that. But I don't buy the argument that Sony's given to the public about safety. I mean, look at Microsoft servers and the type of servers they run. I mean, they've also had issues with. You know, they're afraid that they're going to have a bunch of you know adults yelling obscenities at a bunch of kids or something. You know, as far as who's worried about they, that? Th- Sony's Sony. not worried about that. Yeah, they, Sony they doesn't care that. about that. Sony, yeah, it's a warning on every ge- online game. Yeah, that they don't control they, online interaction. But, uh, but the, what I think, I think hold it's on. from coming from a different community. Okay, hold on. Let me get let me get my two cents in. I think the reason why they're they don't want to allow crossplay other than the stated reasons they like to have tight control over their online infrastructure and they're giving up a lot of that by by letting other networks in uh they don't want like if you play minecraft crossplay even on a nintendo there's still a microsoft and an xbox logo on the main screen really Be- yeah because because in order to play minecraft you have to have no matter what uh console you're on you have to have a microsoft xbox live account because in that case, that's a special case because it's a Microsoft game. I didn't know that. Also, one of the most popular, so it's it matters, you know. So Nintendo's cool with it because they don't care. They don't see themselves competing with Sony and PlayStation anymore. Uh, but and I think Microsoft is slowly taking on that attitude as well. Yeah, and that's kind of what we talked about a couple weeks ago right, because right. they're getting their asses kicked so hard. It's kind of what Nintendo did when they were getting beat the fuck up by sony and microsoft was they were like people are like oh what, what's your take on getting beat up and they're like oh we don't we're not competing with them what are you talking about it's like the <laughs> I, you can't fire me i quit notion it's kind of like what microsoft is starting to do just because they've sold less than half the units of, of microsoft that's, that's true but i don't think that means that it's going to be a, a bad strategy for microsoft it worked for nintendo the, do nintendo is doing well to do what? with the switch oh to, to, to like just go basically as far as the 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 new you know Microsoft saying we're not doing generations anymore. We're doing updates now, like similar to a PC. Yeah, so um, you can't fire me. I quit method, and that's fine. And I, don't think, and I don't think it's bad either. I just think it's a sign of defeat, which is not a bad thing either. It's they're going their own route. That's fine. Defeat in, in what way? Like, I mean, uh, we already know that they have less sales. Yeah, well, they that's, have that's in less the way than I mean. a half. Yeah, right? that, yeah that's the way I mean that they've even when you're when Phil Spencer, you're, you're head of the what what was it a uh, xbox live online he's the head of something comes out and says yeah we lost this generation and that's fine and we're just going to focus on what we can do as far as services for our gamers like backwards compatibility yay access you know whatever all those little programs they have to to kind of make up for the fact but uh to get back to my point sony won't allow it because they don't need it they they gain nothing 
Um, they gain nothing. They, right. they open themselves up to um, attack and they and problems. They um, and and Nintendo or and Microsoft even more so has so much to gain from it. Imagine if you were like the second or third place system, and and of course you're going to fight for a system that allows people from first place to come in and play on your servers because that increases your brand awareness. It increases the chance of people buying Xboxes, and so there's they have so much to gain. Uh, not, not a whole lot to lose at this point, and it's the opposite for Sony. So I think Sony's just like, nah, we don't need it. And I, that's kind of what, what I think on, on that. Zach? Um, also, if you think about the, and just looking at the sales, if if PlayStation has over double the sales that Microsoft has, we could assume that they have double the online, uh, online uh, players. They have double online players. So if Microsoft all of a sudden gets all the PlayStation users... They have way more people to compete against online. Right. We already have on for those of us who play PlayStation, we already have a, a lot of competition online, uh, yeah. over twice what Microsoft has. Yeah. So, but my my reason why I think is probably pretty similar to your reason as far as why Sony's not doing it. It's a business decision, mm. um, but I think Microsoft is looking at it more from a gamer's perspective. Um, no, I think they're like any company. They're looking at it from their wallets perspective. What do we have to gain from this? Um, and I think they're going to portray it like they care about gamers. Just like when you hear, I don't think they've tried to portray it that way. They haven't tried to portray it anyway. Oh, but when they do, they will, you know, wait till next year's E3. I think it's obvious because they're the ones like making the effort. It's well, so I, you know, we don't know that. It making, seems like they're it. the ones making the effort because they have a lot to gain monetarily, not because they love fans. Has, they don't love you, trust me. Sony I, doesn't. I, I didn't say they and love. Sony us. doesn't love us. But, <laughs> but I, to them. But I think it's definitely <laughs> it benefits the gamer. I think it benefits the gamer, and not doing it benefits the business for Sony. Um, so I think you're right there. But as far as for as far as a gamer's perspective, which is what I always look at this as. Um, I think that uh, it's a good thing. Okay, so uh, let's narrow it down here on, in conclusion. I say they just don't need it and have nothing to gain. What do you say? I say they, they open themselves up to too much risk. So. What, what about you, Chris? I say they don't need it either, and they do have some, but I think they will do it. All right, good enough. Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, so the next topic, just on the same in the same vein of online interaction, gaming, yeah. online interaction, I wanted to talk about trolling. Mm, so you're a master troll. trolling. I'm pretty good at it, but but a lot of people have the wrong definition of what a troll is. Yeah, you were talking about uh, the other day about it being an art form in some way. Can you explain that to me? Because I I don't see it as an art form in any way. Well, it it because it takes it, t- it takes a very uh, skilled person to do it. So what you have to do as a troll, what I, my definition of what a troll is, is someone who poses as though they're part of a certain community and they say and they gain trust amongst the people in that community and then say inflammatory shit that makes the entire community look bad because they had already had gained some sort of rapport with them so i I just think i always thought a troll was just someone that may go onto a comment section or something like that and just start saying inflammatory shit just just to be a dick that's not usually that's not that is some form of trolling but it's not it's not that would not be an artistic well the way, way of doing it but the, how, oh, how is doing it that way hold artistic? on hold on the way that the internet defines trolling is to make a deliberately offensive or provocative online post with the aim of upsetting someone or eliciting an angry response from them so if we're going by the, are we going by that definition I of think trolling? we should go by the official definition. Well, there's there was actually there was a paper published by uh, Cambridge University. It was from a, a philosophy professor from the University of Toronto. Um, I forget her name, but she just posted this uh, hilarious um, article on trolling, mm. and uh, in it she de- she describes the definition of what a troll is, but she does it in language like Aristotle. So for <laughs> nice. any philosophy buffs out there, it's worth it's worth looking up. Um, let me let me get her name really quick. You could probably just Google, you know, Cambridge trolling article or I, you know I'm study I'm, or whatever I'm on it. and get and get where you need to go. But as far as like if a tr- if trolling is an art form, do you think it could ever be considered? Well, an art there's form? no doubt trolling is fun i think assi- calling it an art form is assigning too much to it. Um, but explain I, how it's fun. I don't, you know, it's fun. Well, isn't it fun pissing people off sometimes? 
Yeah, see, that's where I, <laughs> it's, that's, when you, that's where we differ. To me, I don't think trolling could ever be considered an art form. I mean, because every day I run into dicks all the time out in the real world. Because you, and the last thing I want to do is go online and and hear a bunch of immature kids, which is what trolls basically are, just being dicks. That's hyperbole. And the, honestly, the only people that I think would ever consider trolling to be any type of art form are other trolls. Um, so <laughs> I mean, what about the, so, so say a meme, like the whole Bush did nine 11 meme, that's a troll on conspiracy theorists. And clearly the people who post like the Bush did nine 11 ridiculous memes, they're clearly posing as if they believe in conspiracy theories. Some people, that but post it's meant to do. expose, it's meant to expose how f- ridiculous people who, who align with those theories really are. And that type of trolling, I think, is is hilarious, and it it's so it's it's humor on a whole other level. And yeah, it is a form of humor. I, I, get I also that. think it's a part of our society's decay. With this whole shit you always hear about fake news, people go on the internet, they don't know what the fuck to believe, and trolls are probably half the fucking reason. Oh uh, yeah, that could be true. Uh, but I don't. I think trolling is undeniably fun it can be if it's you know if no there's no real victim um i do i think do i think trolling could, are there real victims no there, really. there, could, there could be but so you you, like your idea of trolling is pretty uh extreme it sounds like chris you you it's think trolling annoying. is just someone who goes Get on and close. spreads shit but, yeah it's just annoying i don't i mean i just find it annoying let me That's let me point. read this excerpt. Pointless. So that means let me read this not excerpt. funny Okay, we get it. Okay, stop trolling us and let us <laughs> continue, please. All right, so Rachel Barney is her name, and she did this. Um, let me quote it. So, that trolling is a shameful thing, and that no one of sense would accept to be called a troll, all are agreed. <clears throat> but what trolling is, and how many its species are, and whether there is an excellence of the troll, is unclear. And indeed, trolling is said in many ways, for some call troll anyone who is abusive on the internet chris but this is only this is only the disagreeable person um and the one who disagrees loudly on the blog and on each occasion is a lover of controversy or an an attention seeker but none of these is a troll the troll in the proper sense is one who speaks to a community and as being part of the community only he is not part of it but opposed and the community has some good in common and this troll must know and what things promote and destroy it for he seeks to destroy so so is she making up her own definition that's her definition yes but that's not the official definition no there is no official definition we're just we're just in this sense of what a troll is as being someone who goes and poses as being part of a community and in in real in what's what's happening in reality is this person's trying to to bring down the community that that's that's the definition of troll that we're using right now in this discussion Sounds more like a spy and that it it, can, it is spy like a spy going in for like some espionage yeah, that's absolutely espionage. what it is and well, in that way you call them a troll well that's what we are right now in this conversation we're saying troll if you want a different word we can call it an ogre but it, the definition remains the same. It's someone who goes on and poses as being part of the community, but really tries to bring it down. I don't think that's the official definition. Okay, well, no, that's the <laughs> definition of what we're speaking about right now. You would be horrible in a. But I don't. Class. Uh, that's that's <laughs> that doesn't make any. Okay, fine. So a troll is uh, is a person that purposefully goes into a community even though they don't believe this community's specific philosophy poses like they do uh for the sole intent of bringing down said community or philosophy exactly that's a form of trolling yeah. that that's one definition of it that's what we're using for this conversation not someone who's abusive on the internet so what you're but rather so someone who poses why why are we calling it trolling though because it's only online um because it's it's why, why, why do we are, call any word any word all, it's all arbitrary we're just calling it a troll just because trolls like to fuck shit up that's what i'm saying we're calling it a troll to give a good side to trolling Give a what? To give a positive side to trolling. That's why we're calling. No, it no, no, this is a totally different topic. This isn't someone who goes on. We're talking about someone who, who, I mean, let the thing I defined a million times. That's what we're talking about. Not someone who who goes on and is abusive on the internet because that type of trolling isn't good. And I disagree with that. I disagree with people who go on and start needless. Uh, 
shit talking. I, then I'm, I guess what I'm saying is that I'm against calling what what you're saying the definition of what you're saying trolling is okay adding that to the definition of trolling because i think that gives trolls out there some type of glor- glorification which they should not get because they're annoying and uh, i think that trolls are trolls and this i think should be maybe called something else because i i just think troll has a bad well, inco- in, you know yeah you guys are both of you are splitting hairs like crazy to be honest yeah. and arguing crazy semantics but so we so can let, call it something oh, else well, hold on let's get get off that for a second Trolling can be very fun. If you don't think it's fun, that's great for you. That means you don't think trolling's fun. Mm-hmm. For the other seven billion people on the planet, the majority <laughs> of them find trolling fun because it's a human. It's human nature. It's the same way why you see a monkey swinging down from a tree and grabbing a tiger's tail to piss it off. That's trolling. I have seen that video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that>. We, <laughs> um, so, so trolling can be fun. Now, in my mind, trolling, like, say, I, I'm playing Friday the Thirteenth uh, on PS4, and I and I grab a guy uses a pocket knife to get away from me, right? And he starts running away, and instead of grabbing him again, so I open myself up to another knifing, I just hack him to death. He's gonna send me a message calling me a hack and slash cheating bitch, because he's butt hurt that he died and he didn't get to use his knife. That happens right. all the time in that game. Now, that guy came at me, you know, rudely with a the, with the message, so now I'm gonna take the utmost joy in trolling his ass. So I'm gonna just respond in very instigating ways and very like just poke him, poke him the bear. Basically, how pissed off can I get this guy? If he's gonna that. be a big I, I dick and, and send me guys, a message um, like that, I'm gonna be like, how mad can I get him? I can you see know that. what I mean? Um, and so that trolling to me is hilarious. Sometimes, uh, and sometimes when I'm playing Rainbow Six and a guy gives me the eye for too long, a teammate, and I shoot him in the face and he dies. That's trolling too, and it's a little more fucked up. But even that's kind of fun. <laughs> you should. Have- I have a distinctly different laugh when I troll something. It is yeah. like a laugh like I'm getting away with something, and it's so it's like giggling. And it's, I, I've heard it. <laughs> very high-pitched. Yeah, it's very high-pitched. So that kind of trolling can be really fun to me, but going online and trying to destroy communities and trying to... Uh, things like that are not my style, but I'm not shitting on them either. That's not my style of trolling. But yeah. So to answer the question, can trolling be uh, art form? I say no. Um, but I think it's still in human nature, and I think it's really fun. It can be really fun. So let's let's all get our our final word, and that was mine. Okay. Exactly. okay. I think what you what you're doing that type of trolling, I think that is an art form. I think very few people can do it and master it, and no. it's something that you have down. Seven point billion people do it. <laughs> not do not it. the way Nick does. Yeah, most people respond, and it's instant like just an argument like a loud argument trying to over talk each other yeah but when you lead someone on and draw them in on your game essentially yeah. Yeah. it's that that's a exactly. bit of an that kind of trolling to me is the pinnacle of trolling um so we already know how chris feels we know he doesn't you know dig it um he's not a big fan of of the trolling nature so moving on down the list here to the next topic john jones recently got popped for a uh, anti-doping violation, give us the scoop on that. that so, <clears throat> so John Jones, it, he's still entitled to due process, so he's he's he can fight this. But he was popped for for a steroid. Um, I forget which one it was specifically. It was an oral orally taken anabolic steroid. It was one that um, I was listening to Chael Sonnen's podcast on it, and. It's a it's a steroid that people use for bodybuilding. That it's not one for endurance or anything like that. It's one for bulking up, which is just incredibly stupid on John Jones' part. It's so needless. Um, and so, at the moment, right now, John Jones is saying that he had no idea that it happened. He apparently, according to the reporter who was with him when it, the news was broken to John Jones, apparently he was. Can, in complete shock which maybe i can believe because a lot of athletes they do get fed stuff by their trainers but i mean this is a guy who's ha- have he's had how many violations i mean he's had steroids once before he's had and cocaine yeah, he hit that ch- pregnant chick with his car and went back for the drugs or money i think yeah so i mean he's obviously not making good decisions and and four times is one too many yeah and he so he tested positive for a uh a i think is how you pronounce it yeah uh, which is an anabolic steroid taken orally so this is, these ain't dick pills like, yeah like, like he claimed before you know right so uh what do you have more to say because i have more to say if, if not no what do, you, what do you got to say on it? um bring it back to wwe for a minute uh this has implications far beyond ufc 
Uh, so I think it's it's worth talking about for a while. Um, yeah, so because now this means is Brock Lesnar gonna fi- face him? Because remember when he won, John Jones won. He said, "Brock Lesnar, if you want to know what it feels like to get your ass kicked by a guy forty pounds lighter than you, come find me in the octagon." And that suddenly, when that happened, uh, plans started to change backstage at WWE. Brock was going to drop the title at SummerSlam, and he was going to leave the company and start training for uh, start training for what's it called um, MMA again. But suddenly, Brock wins at SummerSlam. Um, so I think this has far-reaching implications for WWE, uh, also. You know, because now now that changes completely changes their championship plans. Right, and, and now we will Jones. not see Jones versus Brock Lesnar now if he gets uh, banned for if another he, five if years. He, if it comes back as legit, he took steroids, then he's out for four years. So, did they have any inf- inside information, and maybe that's why Brock won? Well, that usually happens in the WWE, at least. I don't know about UFC. Like for instance, um, they they knew about Roman Reigns testing positive for uh, Adderall uh, about a month before they popped him for it. And they made it. They waited, made him drop the title, and you know before they popped him, and that took a while. But it's a whole different world. From the from what I kind of gathered, the initial feeling was that Brock was going to lose. Yeah, that was, was the kind of idea. shocking that he won. Right? It was a great match, though. By the way, so any any other closing words on the John Jones situation? Do you think he's going to get stripped? Well, I think he i th- I think he's going to come back as yeah. He took steroids because he's done he's done it so many times before. Right, yeah, it's and even a when he got caught with, stepper. even being caught with cocaine, if he was doing cocaine, you know he was doing steroids at the time too. Yeah, so. some of this stuff, like like this specific steroid, what was it called? Terinol or Terinabol? Terinabol? Like yeah, that is supposed to go out of your system within two days. I mean, how do you get caught with that? Does that mean so, he was jacking? You know, before like two days before the fight, could have been. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. Um, so it also could be, maybe he was actually planning on fighting Brock Lesnar and wanted to bulk up. I mean, cause he took a bulking steroid, not an endurance steroid, not one that athletes normally take. Right. So, um, I mean, we'll see how it all pans out right now. It's too early to say anything cause he, you know, he's entitled to, to defend himself. So John Jones, you done fucked up. Uh, that was, uh, you know, tough to see. I hate I, I I felt so bad for Daniel Cormier in the whole situation. Uh, he had to have been fuming, and I'm sure Dana's face found a new shade of red. Dana White. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on down the list here, a forgotten game of the week. Take it away, Zach. All right. So this week's forgotten game is Asterix and the Great Rescue. Have you guys heard of that one? No, and that's what makes it such a sick choice. <laughs> what what system? Sega Genesis. Okay. Do you so, remember the uh, the like the the release of so many 2D platformers during that time? Yeah. Cool Spot, Chester Cheeto. Oh yeah. All the little uh, hook games. Yeah. Robin Williams and all yeah. that. So this was just one of those. This ge- and so Asterix and the Great Rescue. It's actually it's a it's a British game made about a French comic book called Asterix the Gaul. So. Do you know what a Gaul is? No, tell me. <laughs> so a Gaul is actually they're an ancient Celtic people from around the Roman Empire's time. Um, and so this game takes place during that Roman Empire. And the Gauls were living in what's modern day France. Okay. And Julius Caesar is the one who went and conquered them. So the, so the story tells of one particular Gaul named Asterix who's going to rescue a Druid. Um, that was a religion they practiced in Gaul was Druidism. You've heard okay, of Druids yeah. and stuff. So Undertaker they, commends them. <laughs> Undertaker commends them. They take potions. They're known for like making potions and stuff like that. Nice. So the the goal in the game actually with each level is Asterix has to get to the end and drink the potion. It's, oh, okay. It's cool. a two, it's a two D side side scrolling platformer that is very strategic so it takes a lot of trial and error unfortunately it so sure does. if you play it you will die a lot you will get frustrated but it's it's simple trial and error to to figure out how to beat each level. it's one of these I, I played it a little bit just to kind of you know be able to talk about it but it's one of these games where you're punching and stuff like to, to hurt people to hurt enemies but sometimes i don't know if you can control what type of punch he throws but I was only able to throw these uppercuts that had no range. Right. So it was really hard to, to kill people. But 
One thing I wanted to, to touch on real quick, and, and you know what, I don't want to get ahead of you, you're probably going to touch on the music at some point. Well, um, we'll get we'll get to the music, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd like to hear your opinion of it, because I really like the music. Awesome. Yeah, but um, going awesome. back to your, to your melee attack that he has, if you go if forward in attack actually has a little more range than standing still in attack. That's something I realized, because I would go up to enemies and try to get as close as possible yeah, right, and, and to test the range. That kind of sounds like Altered Beast. Yeah, a bit. Do you remember? Yeah, a bit, but it was a lot more cartoony and. Uh, it, well, I mean, the fighting style, uh, yeah, the punches and kicks. Yeah, you also have ranged attacks. You have uh, you can throw ex- exploding bombs. You could throw clouds to get if there's a ledge that's a little too high to jump to. You could throw a little cloud and jump on that, and then get to your goal. Cool. It's it's really strategic and it's a lot of fun. But that's a really cool subgenre we didn't see a lot of back then. Was not just the side scrolling two D platformer, but the side scrolling two D platformer beat 'em up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we saw Streets of Rage and Fist of not Fist of, Streets of Rage and Fatal Fury, which were side scrolling beat 'em ups. Yeah. And we had Mario and things like Contra. You had Batman Returns. You had yeah, Batman which series. were side scrolling uh, like platformers. But then you you had very few games like Sunset Riders or like Asterix that were side scrolling platforming beat 'em ups. I had mixed all three, and Asterix did it geniusly. Yeah. You remember Battletoads? Yeah, I, I love, love Battletoads. Love Battletoads. Yeah. You have that on Xbox, don't you? We do. Yeah, yeah on the rare replay. <laughs> so, um, getting back to to Asterix, um, I just wanted to say it's it's lineage. It's it was made by Core Design. And for, for those of you who don't know, they were bought by Eidos, and they were the original developers who made the Tomb uh, the Tomb Raider series. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. So so it has a good it has a good uh, pedigree. Pedigree, absolutely. And um, it's it's just one of those games that just kind of got forgotten uh, for no reason, I, other than maybe it was a little too difficult. Just I don't time, know. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. It's one of those games that just got lost in the mix of the time. It was you know with all the games that were out that were similar around the time. It just and it was on the uh, less popular console, the Genesis. Right. Um, so it, it makes sense that it was forgotten. But when you told me last week that you thought of that as your game, I was I was so pleased because like I'd, I'd never heard of it. And when I looked it up, it was one of those games that just looked like something I would have played the hell out of when I was a kid. Oh, uh, I, yeah. I played nonstop. Me and my sister Maggie played it all the time. And it was one of those few games that she was actually better than me at. Did and I ever, think it could have been the age. Did you ever beat it? Um, Maggie did, yeah. Maggie was Maggie was really good at it. It was really surprising. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of her few good games, but she's good at strategy and stuff like that, and that's that's what a lot of it was. So, if uh, did you have anything else on that? So, if you want to go check out Asterix, it was on the Sega Genesis and the Sega Master Drive, um, or Mega Drive or whatever the, <laughs> the Genesis was called overseas. Yeah, um, it was on that. You could you could get it if you could find it there. There you, there are ways to play it online and stuff. Also, it's a really fun beat 'em up, and the music in it is fantastic for uh, one of the best platformer music I've heard. Yeah. So, moving on down the list now, Chris, take it. Yeah, so I got a question for you guys. It's um, about the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. Do you think it's possible that some people's experience with the PS4 Pro has maybe soured some to ordering Xbox One X? I'd like to go first on this one. Go ahead. Um, uh, here, let me give you my line of thinking first. Go first before you go first. Okay, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just well, kidding. Go okay. ahead. Well, I'm, <laughs> this is what I've been hearing, some of the rumblings. Um, you know, the Xbox just recently released um, a long game, a long list of games that are getting the enhanced um, upgrade once the One X comes out. Um, some some good games, you know, Fallout, Tomb Raider, a lot of good ones on there. Um, but you know, there's also been people that say, you know what, that when the PS Pro uh, came out, they did the same thing. They upgraded a lot of titles. Um, they gave it the you know the 4K treatment and you know all that. Um, however, it wasn't noticeable enough. It wasn't w- what they expected. It maybe even wasn't worth the money they paid for the Pro. Um, so, in this sense, do you think maybe some people are a little bit hesitant now on ordering something like the One X that is limited on native 4K titles, but does have a long list of games that are getting some pretty good upgrades, some noticeable upgrades from what people that have dev kits are saying? Um, what do you think, Nick? So, before I get to what you just said, I'm going to answer the core question. Like, uh, is what was the experience that everyone's had with the Pro going to hinder? 
1x sales, right? Is that basically what you're asking? Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. Or soured public sentiment, right? Here's the problem is with the upgrade, you know what I'm saying? With the upgrade process of some titles getting, you know, not the full 4K 60 frames per second treatment, but they're getting, like the PS4 Pro, when they would uh, upgrade certain titles with 4K, most of it was, was, was done with checkerboarding and right. it wasn't noticeable, like, people expected i guess well here's to answer your question no um because the xbox one x and the ps4 pro are two completely different systems um and that's kind of why, why i wrote this on the board here is people need to stop comparing them because they're not the same they're not on the same level the uh, xbox one x is almost three times more powerful <laughs> you know and so it's 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 like comparing uh the wii and the xbox 360 it's just it's not a good, a good comparison to make um and i think the public understands that at least the gaming public the people that care enough to buy a 1x for their 4k tv are audiophiles and technophiles that love that kind of stuff so they know um the general public they don't care they, they don't know the difference and 4k tvs are not the norm yet they are on the horizon, but we're kind of at with 4K TVs where we were with HD maybe in 2006 or 5. You know, where they were on the market, but they were expensive as hell and not a lot of people had them yet. And as the technology gets cheaper, more people will get 4K TVs and therefore more people will get Xbox One X's and PS4 Pro's. Um, the problem with PS4 Pro is their messaging was all garbled when it came to that, when, that console. They just kind of released it and they were like, here's the thing. Like this is this is what it does, and um, no one asked for it, and it's premature. And but here you go, and so it was a really garbled message that that soured a lot of people on play, whatever PlayStation has coming up next. The way PlayStation pushed VR is the way Xbox is pushing the One X. Like they really care, and this is the next big thing. And that's and, and but the Xbox One S was kind of like the way Sony pushed the Pro, where the messaging was all garbled and no one really cared. Uh, but, but to go on with, with what you were saying, um, no, I think public sentiment right now towards the One X is very high. Um, and I think that's great. I think uh, people are excited for it. Um, it's Xbox's fastest selling console for pre-orders. Uh, so I no to, to short answer no I don't think it's it's gonna affect it at in fact it's gonna help. They've actually positioned themselves in, in a spot to where it, even if the Xbox One X wasn't or doesn't do as well as they predict, they kind of set pretty low expectations for it. Um, you know they've said many times the One S is going to outsell the One X. You know yeah, they, and, they've and said I think many that's times the 4K that, TV issue. And well, and they've said you know many times that look, the One X is a premium console. It's for those hardcore people with the yeah. 4K TVs that really care about the horsepower and the graphics. It's a premium console. Sounds, they, they've admitted that look, the One S will outsell. It the sounds One like X. you're kind of underselling the One X, though. To be honest, I but, think the One well, X. I'm is trying to point out like that it's, it's kind of doing better than what they expected. I think. Yeah, and that's true. I think they did set their sights pretty low, but I think the One X is going to sell like gangbusters. I don't think it's going to put a dent. In what them compared to PS4, I but think, I think it's going to really put a lot more faith back in Xbox. That but I think if, P if PlayStation uh, people do end up getting a One X, it, it's not going to mean that they throw out their PlayStation. You know, it's going to mean that they just get a One X. You know, so it's right. not like I, I don't think it's going to make a dent either. How, do you, you, how do you feel, Zach? Um, I feel kind of like you said. T it's technophiles and people who like the latest and greatest. Those are the ones who are buying the One X. Right. And they're going to go to the store when they go to the store to buy it or if they're shopping on Amazon, they're going to look for the latest and greatest and they're going to buy it. They're going to have the money for it. It's people who have who are wealthy. I mean, what's what's the starting price for it? Five. Uh, four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. So it's starting at five hundred bucks. So these are people who have five hundred bucks to spend. Well, it's starting at the price that the Xbox One started at. And it's six yeah. times as powerful. That's just because yeah. technology's gotten a lot cheaper, and so it's good for gamers and good for them. So looking at the uh, some of the specs real quick, uh, the CPU on the Xbox One X is eight custom X86 cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. Uh, the uh, PS4 Pro is only running at 2.1 gigahertz, and it's a uh, AMD custom Jaguar chip, so they're not made in-house by Sony. Um the RAM, it's got 12 gigs of RAM opposed to the PS4 Pro's eight, which makes a world of difference. That is that's a big difference. That's an enormous difference. But I think to do something like a native 4K on a game, you need that. Yeah, it's it's necessary. And, and to be honest, as far as a 4K um, console goes, Xbox One X is pretty weak. But 
it's way better than what the Sony's got on, on, on tap. And whatever these two companies come out with next is going to be, I think, proper 4K 60 frames, what everyone's been wanting. Kind of like how the PS4 and the uh, Xbox One were what everyone wanted before. True 1080p, mostly, 60 frames per second gaming. I've seen people guessing that we're going to get a freaking upgrade to the One X by next year, by 2019. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. A year from now. I think so. I think Microsoft is really shooting themselves in the foot by uh, dividing up their SKUs like this. I think it's so much more simple to be like, this is our console. I think I think 2 is too much with the PS4 and PS4 Pro. I think it's just, it sends such a mixed message. But do you have anything else to say? As long as they all play the same games, though, right? No, I just, I don't know why PS4, I don't know why PlayStation even came out with it so early. I don't. I mean, they just gave Microsoft something to measure themselves against. Yeah, exactly. And so now they could come out with something. Oh, we'll put twelve gigs instead yeah. of eight. And and if you remember correctly, at PSX, I think last year when the Pro was announced, Microsoft the next day said, "Okay, we're delaying our next console. You know, now we're going back to the drawing board." Yeah. And that was so stupid of it's Sony because now Xbox was like, oh, well, they got 8 gigs, 12 gigs. <laughs> they have fucking AMD Jaguar. We'll do a custom made one. 2.1, 2.3 gigahertz. So, and that's what they did. And they effed themselves. Sony effed themselves hard. But I the really PS4 do Pro. see if the Xbox One X does well, if it keeps on track to do, doing what it's doing, I really see Sony stepping up the PS5 development. Right. Rushing it up, I, I think. Good topic, fellas. Moving on down the list so we can get the show rolling. Gentlemen, start with Christopher. What video game do you wish you could experience for the first time again? Easy. I, can I guess what you're going to say? Yes, and you're going to guess right. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time? Yes, sir. <laughs> Go on. There's so much magic in that game. Yeah, it is a truly magical you game. You just remember, especially when you're a kid and magic is just more evident. Right, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could replay it, and I wish I could be 10 years old and play it again. I remember when Mom bought it for us. Yes, Christmas, Christmas time. And I, I think she got you the game, yeah. and, but she got, like, special edition or something. So she got you the game, but she gave me, like, the T-shirt and the CD <laughs> that came with it. Dude, I came up because that was a dope shirt. That was a dope, dope shirt. I have very fond memories of that Christmas, sitting there. Mom made a big old pot of bean and ham soup. And I had very quickly gotten to like the fishing area somehow. And I yeah, was, we spent so yeah. much time fishing. And we were just fishing, Dude, we eating spent soup. That whole night, Christmas the Christmas night fishing. tree was in the background. Man, That's that is awesome. an easy choice Damn. for me. Ocarina wow. of Time. Taking me way back. That shows you how good of a game it was where you could spend all night doing one fishing. of the side games. One little thing. I mean, we how, long to... did we, how long did we uh, spend just taking that guy's hat off his head with the rod and reel? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That reminds me yeah. of like Red Dead Redemption, going where you could go on one of the side games like poker oh, or, or Dead, Dead Man's, Man's Hand, and or... just spend hours doing that and and still enjoy the game. Right. Yeah. So, what about you, uh, Zach? Um, the as far as a, a game I could experience once again, it would be Civilization Three for you PC and the RTSs, man. You love them. It's yeah. This, uh, well, this is a turn-based Think strategy man's game. Oh, it's a turn-based one. Yeah, it's a turn-based, oh, okay. and it is so addictive. It's one of the most addictive games I've ever played. But I remember when I first played it, I was um, house sitting for the Laravés, where my mom used to work. Nice. And uh, they had it on their computer. Shout out to Larave Guitars. <laughs> And I would, I stayed up like all night playing this game. And when you start, the game is, it has so many layers of strategy and things like that, that it's, when you first start, you just lose and lose and lose. But I remember I would learn something new each game. And once I discovered where the civil, civilopedia was, uh -huh. oh, yeah, their yeah. little in game uh, like, encyclopedia. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit! I, I would Open spend hours just looking at stuff, and you could, and they would tell you about the real history behind behind some of these. So you were learning things. things. So I was learning things <laughs> at the same time. It's like what a good Man. wholesome game. <laughs> yeah, strategy games like that. I remember playing. I mean, speaking of strategy games, Age of Empires four announced by Microsoft. Yes. Holy hell! I need a computer before that comes out. Being released exclusively for Windows ten. Um, uh, it's being developed by a different studio, which is a little worrisome. Uh, but on, on, I'm sure ensemble? Ensemble? Ensemble's probably not around anymore. It was forever ago. That I don't know. I don't how know long has it been in. since 3? Well, 3 came out, like, I think in 2006 or 5 or something like and that. And there was, like, Age of Myths and... Age you know, of Mythology, Age, Age of, of Kings. Age of Mythology, Age of Kings, but... But, but we this played is Age a of Empires true too. Age of Empires game. Yeah. And uh, it's funny. There was a thread on Reddit. Uh, someone posted it in the Best Of subreddit, which is where they post the best comments and stuff. 
uh, Bill Gates did an AMA on Reddit, uh, which is an Ask Me Anything, and somebody uh, went in there and they said, "Hey, Bill, like you know, thank you, blah blah blah. Uh, when will we be seeing a new Age of Empires?" And Bill was like, "Hmm, you're right. That is a great game. I'm going to look into that." And a year to the day later, they announced Age of Empires Four. I love that man. <laughs> really yeah. love that man. Wow, Bill Zach, Gates. Have you played Age of Empires at all? I have. Yeah. Oh man, I, I, I love- just I I I could spend so much hours when you just start from one man. You're throwing rocks at each other. Yep. Ever since Five I got this computer, later, I've been playing a lot you know, of Age of Empires uh, and Empire Earth. So, wh- I used to so play did you a lot like of, it? I yeah, I I liked Warcraft a lot more when I was younger. Warcraft, not not World of Warcraft, but remember like Warcraft, was, yeah, Warcraft, Warcraft, legit. Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. That was such a fun game, and that's another real time strategy. Yeah. I guess you'd call it pretty. It's yeah. pretty close to Age of city Empires, builder, like a city build, city building type game. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. 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 Command and conquer type game. I remember playing with Stephen Placencia. Uh, he was a couple apartments up from us. Yeah, yeah. Just playing over the internet, but we had like a four hour ceasefire rule. So for four hours, we never saw each other. Wow. You know, and then f- when oh, the four hour shit. time limit hit, you know, we were sending out scouts to find where their empires were. You know, and then you just start going at it. Yeah, that's when. The game really it's begins. Awesome. <laughs> Dude. Uh, I remember my very first exposure to Age of Empires was watching Steve play it. Yeah. He, he had it, he was over at mom's house on his laptop, right? And he played it on this old laptop. And uh, yeah, that was my very first exposure. And I remember him trying to explain it to me, and he kept getting, he kept getting pissed because I kept touching the screen and making it do that thing that <laughs> laptops do. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what about you, man? What's your favorite game? If you could, well, not your favorite, uh, if you could revisit a game for the experience, uh, what would it be? That's really tough. I've had a couple in mind. Uh, I'm going to give a couple honorable mentions because I'm indecisive. Uh, Red- you always have honorable mentions. I know, I know. I'm getting really indecisive. Uh, one is Red Dead Redemption. Um, an- another is Skyrim. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. But mine... Oh, this is so hard. I feel like I feel like this is in concrete now. I can never have this a different answer. Uh, it's on the cast. No, you can. Uh, no, but right now, if you, ask, if you were to ask me today, it's actually going to be a more recent game. Wow, really? Uh, Life is strange. Wow, yeah, you really like that game. I've had I've had a lot of more epic experiences with Skyrim. I've had better storytelling experiences with Red Dead, you know, and things like that. But no game has ever captured me like emotionally on that kind of level than um, maybe Shadow of the Colossus. But no game has other captured captured me on that level like Life is Strange. And wow, it's funny wow. because I'm the opposite of their demo, like. It is a game. You're not a 14 year old girl. It's a game, yeah, about <laughs> teenaged girls in Oregon who are going to school. And I'm like a 29 year old man, but yet I'm like <laughs> almost weeping at the end. Like, you know what I mean? And I, I've said this a million times just the, the way they crafted that game to have a certain theme and feel with the colors, the art style, the music, especially uh, things like that. It's just one of the most perfect games. The only uh, kind of glaring flaw in that game is the script is clearly written by 30 year old Frenchmen uh, f- trying to write and sound like American teenage girls. <laughs> yeah. A lot of like wowzers, Max, and like <laughs> a, a extreme overuse of the word hella. Things like that. But it's kind of, it, it becomes endearing if you like the game so much like I do. You kind of like that kind of stuff and chuckle at it. But yeah, that's a game that uh, I only played it two years ago, but I wish I could play it again for the, so much so that I've sat through and watched Zach play it. I've sat through and watched play it. I've sat through and watched Jose play it again. I've just preached the gospel of that game because it's so perfect for me. So, right on. So let's, uh, uh, in conclusion, Life is Strange. Zach says... Civ 3. Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time. That was a really great podcast, guys. I think it's time to wrap it up. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here on Episode 8 of the Crossplay Podcast. We will be here for you every single Tuesday. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so over at Crossplay Pod. And if you want to read our blog, you can do so over at crossplayentertainment.wordpress.com. You can also support us on Patreon if you feel like you want to over at patreon.com slash crossplay entertainment. Anything I'm missing out? I think you got it, brother. All right. One last thing. If oh, you MySpace. Follow us on MySpace over at MySpace slash Tom. LiveJournal.com <laughs> slash crossplay. <laughs> All the old school sites. Friendster. So uh, if you have any questions or topics, more importantly, for the show that you want us to discuss, uh, drop us a line over at Twitter. Uh, slide up all up into our DMs. Let us know, and we will talk about them on the podcast. Any closing words, fellas? I'm good, man. Thanks for listening, guys. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. We'll we love you. See, we do love you, and we will see you next week on the Crossplay Podcast. Bye-bye.